Junkies, Horror Junkies 509, Kyle the 13th coming at you again today you guys and welcome to the very first episode of the Gory Details for 2019 you guys. I am Diva de los Muertos, hola mi amores. And as you can see I dug up my co-host yet again for another episode of the Gory Details you guys because it's about to get nasty and the only the best ways possible. Hopefully practical effects because that's the only way we like it. Absolutely. Alright you guys so... Uh, well, with all the happy new year, you guys, hopefully we're going to be able to continue this on and we're going to keep going just like we have been. A uh, lot more episodes coming up, you guys, but we're going to kind of stick to the same thing because you know what? We fear change. Boom. <laughs> See? It's what we do. All right. So being that it's the first episode of 2019, can I pick, can I draw the movie? Yes, puppy. Actually, I would like you to pick the coin. 2019, the year of the man. Just kidding, it's not true. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Alrighty then. <laughs> so as you guys know, we got our hat full of delicious chocolate coins with my horror movies written on them. And so what we'll do is we'll pick a coin and that's the movie we're going to go watch. And come back with you fine people and we'll tell you all about them gory details. So will you shake it up for me, honey? Yes, I will, mi amor. Yeah. So I want to make sure I pick a good one. You better pick a good one, Rasa. I'm telling you. I know it's the first first episode of the new year, so oh I'm gosh. really hoping for something good. There's so many in here. I know it's ridiculous. I love it. I know I still have quite a few more to add. It's a lot of fucking chocolate, puppy. I know we're all gonna get diabetes, like you said in the first episode. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I think I've given it a nice. Big, like the tamales, you know, when you make the masa. The masa? <laughs> Unless you're like your mama? Yes. And then we forget the masa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. My mom was helping make tamales and she forgot to put masa on the corn husk. I'm, I'm still saying that sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay, and I got all the way down there and I shuffled them all around, honey. Okay, puppy. Pick a good one. Alright, put it up high. Get it high. Because you're tall. Yeah. And I got one. Okay. See what we got here. What do we have? Oh, huh. oh my god! <laughs> and That's we got awesome. Friday the 13th, you guys. Uh, I can honestly can't contain myself because I'm stoked. I'm Kyle the 13th. Friday the 13th. <laughs> it makes sense. Like a lot. Alright, you guys. But something special about this coin is we're not eating this. Do you want, do you want to know why? Why are we not eating it? Because it's the beginning of a franchise. And so, what I'm going to go do after this episode, I forgot to bring a Sharpie in here, I guess. Oh, well. uh, whatever. So I'm going to write part two on this. So I'm going to put it back in the hat, and we could draw it again when we oh. review Friday the 13th, part two. So there we go. That's how that's going to go. So, no chocolate for the either one of us. None? None. Put a little more down your love life, puppy. All right, see, guys, <laughs> uh, I hope some of you understand what she's saying, because I missed it. <laughs> All right, guys, so me and Diva de los Muertos are going to go watch one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, it's not my favorite in the franchise, oh, but it's still it's, good. It's your favorite franchise. And I'm just going to tell you, welcome to the most biased episode of Friday, of the Gordon Details <laughs> ever. Baby? Let's enjoy it. Let's. All right, fellow junkies, and welcome back. Right here at the Gory Details, where we just got done watching 1980s, Friday the 13th. Yes, my favorite franchise is the beginning right here. And to go ahead and get right into this film, you guys, uh, I really don't think this film needs any introduction, but I'm going to go through it anyway, just because that's what we do here on the Gory Details. We yes. slice and dice and show you all the mess. <laughs> Alright, so this was directed by Sean S. Cunningham. Uh, he did not reckon, or direct too many other things that I recognize, but he did direct a movie called Terminal Invasion. I have it. It's a silly alien movie with Bruce Campbell in it, so... I like yeah. Bruce Campbell. I love Bruce Campbell. You yes. can't go wrong. Um, some familiar faces in this movie. I probably put, put up a little bit more than I needed to. I, I talked about Betsy Palmer, the lady who plays Mrs. Voorhees. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite a lady. Um, she's not in anything else I recognize, um... She wasn't really a horror actress, though, either. Classy. Yes. Psychotic. And then I also wanted to talk about Adrian King, the one, the lady who plays Alice, the survivor of all of this. Um, she's not really in any other movies as well. Um, but 
you know, the big star of this movie is Kevin Bacon. Uh, you'll recognize him from movies such as Tremors, uh, Hollow Man, and tons of other things that I won't mention because they're not horror. Oh. We don't talk about We're Footloose stripped. in this house. <gasps> <laughs> All right, you guys, so though, that is the familiar faces in this movie. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the plot right on you guys. Uh, so basically, you get right in this movie, guys. 1957, there's a report of a little kid drowning. Going right on forward to 1958, where two teenagers are killed. And then, you know, it doesn't really tell us where we're at after that. So just get right into the plot of this movie. Basically, this camp is getting re- I cleaned up, trying to put, get put back together after all these terrible things have happened um, over the years, like fires, the water's gone bad, the murders, the drowning, all this stuff. So the owner is finally starting to put all this back together, and he's going to put open camp. He's going to have a camp, so he's got a string of camp counters coming to help him fix it up and get ready for the opening. Basically, throughout the rest of the movie, is each one of these camp counters starts getting picked off one by one in very gruesome and gnarly ways. Um, can't go wrong there. Um, I am going to spoil this movie. It's one of my favorites of all time. And if you haven't seen this yet, uh, shame on you. <laughs> yeah. I will say that. But I still highly recommend you going to see you it. You better win, uh, So, basically at the end, we it's basically a whodunit movie, or a whodunit killer throughout the entire movie. But at the end, we find out it was Mrs. Voorhees. Um, her name is Betsy Palmer, as, the, as far as the actress. And she's killing because her son Jason died in 19... 57 uh, from drowning because all the counselors were having sex. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> so it's kind of like a revenge film, and this lady is psychotic and 100% amazing. Uh, so that is bas the basic plot of this, you guys, without... Okay, I, I kind of told you the whole thing. What can I say? <laughs> like a lot. Yeah, that's kind of that. Wait, Bobby, we need to talk about the kills. Y'all, the cuerpo count, body count... Translation. Thank you. Thank you. Body, cuerpo. Was 10. 10. And uh, there were some really good ones. Like, really good ones. Very there was well a couple off-screen uh, off, kills. Off-camera kills, off and I camera. really don't like those. Uh, me either. It's my um, one of my biggest gripes about this movie, but we'll get into that later. Yeah. But anyways, there was really good kills. And um, speaking of the kills, mm -hmm. I want to tell you my favorite. All right. If that's okay. Go I'll tell you all my favorite. Go on. Okay. So my favorite kill, mi favorito, was good old Betsy. At the end, Mrs. Voorhees. Mom? Mom. Mom? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one right there. Mom? <laughs> Why would you say such a thing? Good old Betsy. She, she kind of had it coming. You're tearing know? her hair out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not her real hair. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so that was, that what was, happened? That was my favorite kill. Uh, at the end, the survivor, Alice, um, gets a hold of the machete and whack, just cuts her head right off. And you see the stuff from her neck and her head and her hairy palms. Maybe that's what her name's uh, Betsy Palmer. It's not her hands, it's Tassos. <laughs> oh, I thought it was her palms. Nope. Hands. You're evil. Hairy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyway, and so that was my favorite kill. And, um, I just, I know this isn't part of the show, but I want to talk about my least favorite kill, and that was Annie. She was so sweet. Like, she should not have been killed. Hated it. Oh, at the beginning? Yes, at the I beginning agree. when she, she's hitching a ride. Damn it, she was almost there. She should have just kept She wasn't a whore doing drugs or anything. She was just a perfect little cook. No, and then she all defined the difference between kid and children, the word. Yeah. She used the word children, not kid. It sounds like a goat. It yeah. sounds like little goats, which I don't get, but... To me, she was very passionate. Anyway, okay, so, sorry, I'm rambling. I want to know, Puppy, now, what was your favorite kill? Okay, I've probably mentioned this before, but I'm going to go with uh, Kevin Bacon's kill. Uh, uh, the arrow through the neck. I mean, uh, I think there was a uh, a tag video where it was like, uh, what, f what, what if you knew how you were going to die, what kill would you want to be in? And I always said Kevin Bacon's because... Sex, a joint, and an arrow through the neck. Sounds like a pretty good day. Oh, man. And I love it. Like, the arrow just kind of comes through and starts twisting, and then, like, you see the blood okay. starts this spraying out. Very true. And, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff, yeah, apparently, like, the rigging came apart. So, either uh, Tom Savini, which all the practical effects were done by Tom Savini Tom and his Savini. crew. He's a total badass. Badass. Uh, he was, so, he blew on the, on the blood hose, so that's why it kind of squirts out like that. Nice. So, it's just something kind of cool. Sweet. All right, you guys, so there was blood. There was There blood. was good oh, stuff, yes, good kills. Blood. So Definitely. where are we at for the gore scale, the newest part of this show? Okay, so...
So, Gore Scale on my part, this is my personal opinion. I'm gonna give it a solid uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, six. I'm gonna give it a six. Um, there was blood, mm -hmm. um, as you all know, in the future. But uh, it wasn't like blood curdling or anything? No, it wasn't. Like in the future, some of the other Friday the 13th. Some of the ones, crazier ones. Yeah, like it wasn't like that. So yeah. I'm giving it a six, which is still way better because we've oh, yeah. seen some with absolutely almost no gore. So well, The very first episode with oh, uh, yeah, right. Macabre. Macab. Yes, and this is the gory detail. So I It's really funny people. when we have a movie that's not gory. I know. So I like when we do the, like the original Halloween, it's gonna be really awkward. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, baby, how about you? Gore scale. All right, the gore scale for me. You know, when the lady's right, she's right. I'm gonna give it a six as well, uh, because like I said, this is not over the top gore. I'm sure people back in the day would say this is a ten, <laughs> but I mean for now, I mean like we've seen Friday Thirteenth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, the rest of them, and they just get bloodier from here basically. Yes. Um, I really feel like this movie doesn't get the recognition it deserves. I mean, because it's got so many sequels. This is not one of those movies that it's... The original is not the best in the franchise. And I think that's known well over. Yeah. I love this movie, though. Yeah. But, I mean, I have another favorite. I mean, it's just... It is what it is. It is. All right. So, with saying that, I mean, I'm sure it's not your favorite Friday the 13th. No, but it's just, you know, the one that kicks it off because it's mom. Oh, I mean, man. You know, but it's so important. It's so crucial. That's what I mean. Like, it's the one... It is the one. And like it's things not I, my favorite. I love about this movie is like the story. I love like Mrs. Voorhees. I love the music. Yeah. Harry Manfredini like killed it in this movie. The practical effects. Tom Savini, we salute you. Practical effects. Yeah. Wow. And uh, just I love summer camp. The, that setting is <laughs> my shit. This I've is never true. been to summer camp. Ever. Kyle would like to own a summer camp. Yeah. Run a summer camp. Be in the summer camp. But I cannot promise your kid's going to come home. <laughs> so, well, there's some probably parents out there that don't mind. <laughs> don't call me. <laughs> all right, babe. So, let's go ahead and wrap this all up in nice, neat little bow. Okay, what do baby. you rate this movie out of 10? Okay, so out of 10, I rate this movie a solid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. An eight. I think you're teaching as well as, you know. I think I'm. This is time. like an educational video. A little bit. I'm gory. I love it. This is fun. <laughs> yes. I'm an excellent teacher. Yes. So anyways, I'm giving it a solid eight, y'all, uh, because it's, it's a great story. I love it. You know, it's the mom, you know, probably a lot of people thought it was a guy, you know, when the kills were going on mm -hmm. before we knew who it was. And no, it was good old Betsy, Betsy Palmer. So I, I really her. like that. I really like that about the story. and Not the, too many female killers out there. No, no. And good ones as well. Yeah. Because she just nailed it. Yeah. The psychoticness and kill her, mommy, kill her. I mean, it was just, she she nailed it. The yeah, whole thing. Total the badass. kills were great. The story is great. I'm giving it a solid eight. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, so to go right ahead and roll this right over to me. <laughs> yes. I think this keeps happening and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to give a solid eight. Literally the... One thing that bugs me about this movie, which knocks it down a little bit, is the off-screen kills. Like, yeah, we can see the aftermath and whatnot, but I mean, with practical effects as beautiful as they've been, why have off-screen kills? I don't get it. Right? I mean, money probably, which is fine, but I mean, it's the one thing that bugs me about this movie. I love everything about it. One thing I want to add to this movie is I really wish that Betsy Palmer was like hanging out in the background of like a scene, like maybe at the... The bar uh, scene at the in the beginning, or maybe at the diner, just like just to show her face, like just like, and oh my gosh, she was right there. Yeah, I think that would have been really cool. That's that's an excellent idea, hon. That would have been awesome. And I just love Friday Thirteenth. It's my absolute favorite. If you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you know I bleed for this shit. Oh. I mean, I always have a hockey mask in the background, all over the place. <laughs> I am Kyle the Thirteenth. We even have one on an oven mitt in the kitchen. So it's true, yeah. and it, we do not use it. It is just for decoration. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> purely decoration. All right, babe. Is there anything else you want to add? I mean, we kind of wrapped it up in a nice, neat little bow, but there's no time to... It's never too late unless until I push the button. No. Nope. I just want to say Happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. I'm glad to be back with Kyle the 13th. Diva, Diva de los Muertos. Muertos. <laughs> I have to dig her up every episode. It's, just, it's gonna get weird. I know. My hair's getting kind of funny. We'll fix it, babe. Okay, thank I'm you. I got it, I promise. <laughs> but anyways, Happy New Year, y'all. And remember, give it a dale or chale. Better give it a dale. <laughs> <laughs> Likes, please. Yes. Like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at whorejunkies509 if you guys ever feel like you're but getting don't neglected check them out too over hard. here. 
whenever you feel like you're getting neglected over here, I got plenty of stuff on there to keep you entertained. Yeah. Good? I think that's going to do it, baby. All right, you guys. So that's going to do it for me. Horror Junkies 509, Kyle the 13th, signing out. Just until next time. And I'm taking Diva de los Muertos with me. And you already know it. I've been sentenced to life. I'm a whore lifer. You guys have a killer day.